Hi everyone, hope you all must be doing great. So today we are starting with another uh, interesting chapter, although this is a very small chapter, very easy chapter, clubbing of income. In this we have sections from starting from, do you know, from section 60 till 65, all very small sections. Yes, this there is only one section which is most important for us, that is six, uh, section 64. Because in exam, generally examiner will test you regarding this section 64. Although those are also, but these, uh, the other sections are very small. You will be able to revise them within five minutes. Okay. So let's start with clubbing first. First of all, uh, what does clubbing means? Because you understand that people don't want to pay taxes or they want, would like to pay very less taxes. So they try to uh, get into those ways so that they can reduce their tax burden. So they try to divert their income. They try to divert their income in some other end. So what we will do, uh, what income tax has that, done is that, that it has uh, income tax came out with such provisions that whenever the income will be diverted, in that case, we will apply clubbing provisions. Clubbing provisions will be attracted and the income the person is getting, it will be clubbed in the hands of generally transferer. We club that income in the hands of transferer, right? So what is clubbing? Clubbing means when income of a person is added in the total income of other person. Why? Because he has he must have transferred his income. That is the reason we apply clubbing provisions. When clubbing provisions will be uh, applied, we will we have to see in section 60 to 65. Second important thing is that under which head this clubbing income, this the income which we are clubbing, under which head it will be added. So it's very easy. See, if we have a diverted our income which is in the nature of IFOS. So it will be clubbed in our hands only in that particular head that is IFOS. So it depends upon the nature of income. If that income is house property income, we have to club it back under which head house property. If that is salary income, we have to club it in the hands in our hands in which particular head same head the nature of income it depends upon the nature of income. It will be clubbed in that particular head only. So here it is written when in such income is added in the transferor's income, it will be added in the same head to which it relates, to which it belongs correctly. And the last point is very important because generally we uh, we just uh, take this as if that only positive income will be clubbed. No, if clubbing provisions are attracted, both types of income, whether it uh, whether it is positive or it is negative, it will also be clubbed. That means. If clubbing provisions are there, if clubbing provisions are attracted, then even it will be attracted on losses also. So if, so if positive income will be clubbed, then negative income will also be clubbed. It means that losses can also be clubbed. Correct. So it uh, please don't take it uh, that way that only positive income profits will be clubbed. No, if clubbing provisions are there, then losses can also be clubbed. Right. So these are quite basic things. Now we are starting with section 60, 60. 60 is a very interesting section. It's a very easy section. It says that whenever assessee, whenever assessee try to divert their income without transferring the asset, he's not transferring the asset. He or she is not transferring the asset, but they are just transferring. They are just transferring their income. No, in this case also, we will say clubbing provisions will be applied. Clubbing provisions will be applied. It's like uh, Mr. A. Let's say Mr. A has a house. He has a house and he is getting a rent of this house. He is getting a rent and he asks his tenant, please don't give rent to me. Give this rent to my brother. Give this rent to my friend. Give this rent to anyone. Right. So Mr. A has a friend, let's say B, and he tells his tenant, don't give this rent to me. Give this rent to B. Correct. So Mr. A has transferred his income. But whether this house is also transferred, the answer is no. The house was not transferred. Right. No, nobody will uh, transfer their assets. Correct. So we understand section 60 says whenever any person tries to transfer their income without transferring the asset, then clubbing will be applied. Please remember to whom we are transferring. We are transferring to anyone. We are transferring to our relative, our spouse, our brother, sister, anyone or to even friend also. So if we are transferring the income to anyone without transfer of asset, section 60 simply says boss clubbing provisions will be attracted. Whatever the income which this person is getting, he, it will be clubbed in the hands of transfer. Correct. Simple section 60. Section 61. Uh, uh, it takes us a step ahead. Section 61 says that if you 
transfer your asset, if you transfer your asset, but how you are transferring it temporary on a revocable basis, if you are transferring your asset on a revocable basis temporary, then we will apply clubbing provisions. If you transfer, so what interpretation with what we can get from this section? If you transfer your asset, if you transfer asset on permanent basis, then clubbing will not apply. But if you transfer your asset on revocable basis, revocable, the meaning of revocable is that the transfer has the right to take it back. They can any time take this asset back. That is called revocable. In fact, there is section 63 also. Here this is a section which gives us the meaning of what is revocable meaning. So we understand the revocable, uh, the meaning of revocable is that whenever we have a right to take back the asset, it will not come in examination, but you should know. I'm so sorry. What's the meaning of revocable, right? Section 60 is simple. It gives the meaning of revocable. Okay, coming back to 61. 61 says that whenever you transfer your asset, that to on a revocable basis, that is temporary basis, we are going to clap it. We are going to clap it. But if the this asset is transferred on non-revocable basis permanently, then clubbing provisions will not apply. Then clubbing provisions will not apply. Because this is quite logical. Because if you have transferred your entire asset, then you have said bye-bye to your asset. Now it will not come back. Now uh, the asset is also gone. The income is also gone. Clubbing will not apply. But if it is a revocable transfer, temporary transfer, then clubbing will apply. Here, please note one important point. We will do section 64 also. And I, as I have said, that section 64 is one of the most important section of this particular chapter, 64. 64 deals with provisions related to spouse. It will uh, deal with son's wife provisions, minor child, and last one is HUF. So in section 64, we'll uh, read this in a couple of minutes. Section 64 deals with four types of provisions. Person, if spouse is getting income, son's wife is getting income, minor child or HF is getting income. And these are special provisions. These are special provisions regarding that. Here we will see that even if the asset is transferred permanently, even if the asset is transferred on non revocable basis permanently, then also clapping will apply. Here we will see that. Here we will see that. But these are very special provisions. But for others, if it is not spouse, son's wife, minor child or HF, if for others, if we transfer our asset on non-revocable basis, non-revocable means permanent, we cannot take it back, then clubbing will not apply. But yes, for spouse and all, we will see special provisions, correct? Okay. <clears throat> there is section 62, which is a bit exception of 61. It says, this section 62, it's very uh, easy. It says that whenever the asset is transferred, whenever the asset is transferred, it is although on revocable basis, although it is temporary, but this is coming with a condition that we cannot take back the asset. We cannot take back the asset until the lifetime of that transferee. The person to whom we have transferred this asset, we can call it, call him transferee, right? Or we can call him um, beneficiary. Okay. So if we are giving them the asset that we can take it back. But there is a condition that until the lifetime of that beneficiary, until that person is alive, we do not have a uh, right to take it back. Then it is a kind of permanent transfer. It is a sort of permanent transfer in that case. Although prima facie, on the face of it, it is looking like that it's a revocable transfer. But actually it is not. Because why? Because you cannot revoke it. You cannot take it back until the lifetime of that particular person. If he's died, if he or she dies, then in that case only we can revoke. Otherwise, we cannot revoke. So it is a sort of permanent transfer. In this case, clubbing will not apply because it is looking like temporary, but it is not temporary. Correct. So this is section 62. We cannot take back until the lifetime of the beneficiary or transferee. Then clubbing will not apply. Correct. Okay. So this is section 60. Let us do a recap. Section 60, section 60 says that if only income is transferred, if only income without transfer of asset, clubbing. To whom we are, you, are, you have transferred your income to anyone, clubbing will apply. 61 says if asset is transferred to anyone, but on temporary basis, permanent, uh, it's not permanent, it's temporary, it's revocable, you can take back the asset, clubbing will apply. 62 says that if although the asset is transferred on revocable basis, but you cannot take it back until the lifetime of the transferee, then it is a sort of permanent 
clubbing will not apply. 63 says meaning of transfer whenever we have a right to take it back, that is called revocable. It will not come in ex examination, but you should know 63 also. Now here is an important section, section 64. I said important, but at the same time, very easy section. 64 is also very easy. 64 deals with, as I have said, uh, it deals with the provisions related to spouse. Second is son's wife, third is minor child and fourth is HUF. We will deal uh, one, uh, one by one with them. Okay. First, let, let me talk about spouse. Actually, there are three types of income which spouse can get here in this section 64. One is remuneration to the spouse. If spouse gets remuneration, remuneration means salary. It could be salary, bonus, commission or by whatever name called. If the spouse is getting remuneration, then we will deal how if the whether the income will be clubbed or not. Second is if we transferred the asset to the spouse also on that to a permanent basis, non-revocable, we have transferred the asset to the spouse. So whether clubbing will apply or not, that we will see. And the last one is that this also this can come in your examination. Any, uh, any of them can come in your examination because this is something important and easy also. Last one is that if there is a business which is in the name of spouse or spouse is running a business and the other person, the, the individual invests something in that business, invests some capital in the business, then whatever is the profit which is derived from the business, whether it will be clubbed or not, or a part of the profit will be clubbed or not, that we will see third point. Right. So you got it. Section 64 deals with four people, spouse, son's wife, HUF and minor child. As of now, we are doing provisions related to spouse. So first is remuneration. If spouse is getting remuneration. So this remuneration can be in the form of salary, bonus, commission or whatever name called. Got it. So if a spouse is getting remuneration, first of all, ask from where she is getting remuneration, from which company, which partnership firm or any other concern from which concern she is getting the remuneration she or you whatever the case may be i'm taking it she okay uh, so if the wife is getting remuneration it could be spouse it could be any one right it could be wife it could be husband also so let's say if the spouse is getting remuneration first of all ask from which concern that person is getting remuneration if the other person the other spouse has a substantial interest in that concern. Let's say if it's a company, that person holds 20% or more ownership rights. There are, that is equity shares. Or it's, if it's a partnership firm, that person holds 20% or more ownership rights, uh, uh, profit sharing rights, right? Or it could be any concern where the other spouse has substantial interest. Substantial interest, we understand 20% or more uh, ownership that we call substantial interest. But here, there is one special point also only here generally in entire income tax act we say that if a person has 20 percent or more ownership that that we call substantial interest but here what we will see is if a person has 20 percent or more ownership which will include the ownership of himself plus even their relative is also having the this ownership then then also it will be clubbed so generally in income tax act if everywhere except from this provision we take only 20 percent or more ownership but here we will see even if the individual along with their relatives along with their relatives so let's say relatives are spouse of the individual brother or sister of the individual linear ascendant or linear descendant linear ascendant you understand parents grandparents descendant children grandchildren so these are relatives so let's say if mr a has a 15 percent equity shares of sub company and Mr. A brother, let's say Mr. B is the brother of A, he has 5% of ownership. So we will club it together. We will club it together. Here, what is what is written over here along with their relative. So here A has 15%, his brother has 5%, total has, is 20%. 20% is also okay, 20% or more, right? 20% or more, so 20% is coming. So we can say Mr. A has substantial ownership. Yes, sir, Mr. B also has substantial ownership. No, sir, he is just holding five. But his brother A, if you look at from the B's point of view, so B is holding five and his brother is holding 15. So B is also a substantial owner, correct? So we will see the individual along with their relatives here. But generally in other sections, we only see the individual 
uh, ownership we don't include uh, relatives in that case right it is only in section 64 we include uh, the spouse of the individual brother and sister of the individual linear ascendant linear descendant parents grandparents children grandchildren right okay okay coming back if the spouse is getting any remuneration if the spouse is getting any remuneration by whatever name called from a concern from a concern where the other spouse the individual has substantial interest then whatever the remuneration which the spouse is getting it will be clubbed in the hands of that individual it will be clubbed in the hands of that individual but there is an exception there is an exception if the remuneration is paid because of technical knowledge professional knowledge skill or experience if it is because of technical knowledge professional knowledge qualification yes or skills or experience possessed by the spouse then do not apply clubbing then do not apply clubbing but if it is not then clubbing provisions will be applied right okay in the other cases if both husband and wife has substantial interest if both husband and wife has substantial interest and both of them are drawing remuneration from a concern without any technical knowledge experience and all right if they have technical knowledge experience and skills then there is no uh, question of clubbing but if they don't have uh, they they don't have technical knowledge skill experience whatever and both of them are getting remuneration from such concern where both of them have substantial interest in that case it will be added it will be added in the hands of that individual whose other income is higher whose other income is higher right so uh, you will see whose other income will be higher it, it will be added completely it will be added in the hands of that individual and once once it is added please remember this because it will be discussed in my minor child case also once it will be added in any of the individual it will be it will remain it that it will be added in the same individual in subsequent year also so in subsequent year we don't have to see what is the level of income it is only in the first and first year only in the first year whenever we are adding it for the first time then we will see what is the level of income whose whose other income is higher whose other income is higher and if let's say husband's other income is higher so in subsequent year also it will be added in husband's income but if in first year wife's other income is higher then in subsequent also year also it will be added in the hands of wife right unless and until ao is satisfied to change that particular head unless and until ao changes it but it will be in subsequent also it will be added in the same it will be continued in the same head in the same hands right and if there is no other income in case there is no other income then we will see whose remuneration is higher whose remuneration is higher we will add in that particular case okay this i have discussed in case other income does not exist then we will see whose remuneration is higher and it will be continue in the subsequent year also that we have discussed second is if we transfer any asset if we transfer any asset to the spouse on non revocable basis also permanently we have transferred an asset we have seen initially that if you transfer the asset on revocable basis then only clubbing will apply but here we are doing special provisions these special provisions and right now we are discussing related to spouse so if we transfer any asset if the assessee transfers any asset permanently to the spouse also without adequate consideration without adequate consideration then also clubbing will apply sir it is transferred permanently are boss this is special provisions these are special provisions related to spouse so in this case clubbing will apply clubbing will apply even if it is permanently transferred but yes there is certain exceptions please i have said that if we get inadequate consideration then clubbing will apply but if we in case we get adequate consideration then clubbing will not apply second important thing is that you should know that whenever we have transferred this asset the relationship of husband and wife should be there secondly whenever the income is coming from that asset relationship should exist both at the time are you able to recall this so uh, the relationship must exist whenever the asset was transferred also that time also uh, the relationship of husband and wife was there and the when the income is also arising that relationship is there so we uh, got this point that if the uh, asset is transferred if any asset is transferred and the consideration is living apart they are getting separated they are getting divorced in that case clubbing will not apply in that case clubbing will not apply but if there is no case of living apart the asset is getting transferred that to without adequate consideration then clubbing will apply but in case 
if let's say us the asset transfer please remember because we know there is a section 27 also that we did in house property deemed ownership but if the asset transferred is a property it's a house property it's a building if an individual let's say he has transferred the building to their spouse to his or her spouse in that case please do not apply clubbing because we know section 27 will be attracted there so that will be the case of deemed ownership so there is no need of clubbing anyways the transferor has to pay tax it will be it will become the income of the transferor only because that person will be considered as a deemed owner so clubbing will not not apply but if the asset transferred is any other asset this is any other asset other than house property in that case clubbing will apply so in both the cases we understand that transferor has to pay tax it will be transferred as income but in the first case if house property is transferred the property which is getting transferred is a house property it's a building in that case apply deemed ownership provisions but if it is another assets other assets other than building apply clubbing provisions in any way the transfer has to pay tax then that's for sure second thing is that if we have transferred any asset if we have transferred any asset and that assets changes its shape or form let's say if we have transferred debentures then whatever the interest on debentures it will be clubbed correct second let's say if we have transferred debentures but the spouse has sold these debentures and she has purchased other things let's say she has purchased shares also then it is also immaterial clubbing will apply in that case also so whenever the asset is transferred if it changes shape or form then also clubbing will apply but you understand that clubbing will not apply on any income which arises on clubbed income let's say let me give you an example let's say there is a person mr ashok mr ashok transfers debentures transfer debentures of rupees 10 lakh so 10 lakh would be clubbed no the interest on this the income on this asset will be clubbed so debentures were of rupees 10 lakh where the uh, person is getting interest of 1 lakh 20 thousand so let's say mrs ashok mrs ashok uh, get a get uh, interest of 1 lakh 20 thousand on this debenture so 1 lakh 20 thousand will be clubbed in transfer and ashok set so let's say mrs ashok takes this 1 lakh 20 thousand rupees with her and she invests this 1 lakh 20 thousand somewhere else and this she invests this 1 lakh 20 thousand somewhere else from where she is getting 12,000 rupees as income. So whether this 12,000 will also be clubbed in the hands of Ashok? No, because we understand this is an income from clubbed income. Clubbed income was how much? 120. 120 will be clubbed, but not this income. Got it? I believe that you are able to recall this provision also. So please note income from clubbed income shall not be clubbed. Correct? And I have already discussed this. Clubbing provisions will also apply if the transferred asset changes form or shape. Last point in case of spouse is that if any amount is invested in spouse business, let's say spouses are running a business or there is a business in a spouse name and she is running a business. So whatever is the profit, should that be also clubbed in the hands of transferor? The answer is it depends upon how much capital that person has invested. So what we have to do is whatever is the profit from that business, whatever the profit from that business, we have to see how much the capital that individual has invested in the spouse business so whatever is the proportion of that capital we have to apply that particular proportion to this profit so how we can calculate this we have a form formula but this is very logical formula you don't even have to learn this formula you can build your own formula right so let's say spouse let's say mrs a mrs a was having some business mrs a was having some business and she has the capital of rupees 10 lakh in this business and now Mr. A also, Mr. A also invested rupees 5 lakh in this business. So tell me how much is the total capital now? 15 lakh. 15 lakh is the total capital which is now invested in the business. And how much Mr. Is, uh, the individual has given? Rupees 5 lakh. So we can say 5 lakh is the amount invested by the individual, 5 lakh out of total capital of 15 lakh. So this is the ratio. This is the proportion you have. And now you can multiply this with the profit of the business you will get the amount that should be clubbed in the hands of that individual correct but please remember one thing you have to calculate this provision on the opening capital on the opening capital uh, by, uh, by opening capital i mean as on first day of the previous year that is first april so if any amount is invested 
on or before 1st April, then we can take it. But if it is invested after, during the year, then we cannot take it. So let's say Mr. X has invested rupees 5 lakh. 10 lakh was already the capital. 5 lakh is more invested. But Mr. X has invested, let's say on 2nd of April, 2nd April 23 and our previous year is 23, 24. So this amount is invested on 2nd April. Although I can say that although this amount was invested for almost entire year, just it was not on first day. But in this year, we'll, we are not going to apply clubbing provisions. Why? Because the amount was not invested on the first day. Next year, we can apply this provision. But this year, we cannot apply. So it is important that that capital, the amount which is the total in the business, that in that capital, there is something which is invested as on 1st April of the previous year, then only clubbing will apply, otherwise it will not. Got it? And the fourth point is that now people know that if they will transfer anything to the spouse, clubbing will apply. So what they have tried is they have came out with certain other ways. They, they say that now we are not transferring it to spouse directly, but now we will be indirectly transferring to the spouse. How? They have made an artificial person, they have made an artificial entity and now they say that, now they are saying that we have transferred this asset to that entity. But the entire benefits of that entity are with spouse. In that case also, this is called as indirect transfer. If person will do, if any individual SSC will do such type of indirect transfer also, clubbing provisions will apply in that case, right? Next is provisions related to son's wife. I tell you, these are similar provisions. Whatever we have done in case of spouse, the same provisions will apply in that in case of son's wife also. The same provisions are there. But please, this is important. Let's say if any asset is transferred to son's wife. So at that time also, the relationship of uh, father-in-law, mother-in-law and son's wife was the, should be there. And at the time when the income is also accruing, that relationship must exist, right? Now, very important, which actually comes in your examination. Generally, it comes in your examination. Income of a minor child, income of a minor child. So if there is any income of a minor child, it will be added in the hands of parent. It will be added in the hands of parent, either mother or father. To whom, uh, in whose hand, whose income before such clubbing is higher? Whose income? Let's say mother's income is higher. So it will be added in the hands of mother, right? And subsequently also same provision. In subsequent also year also, it will be added in the hands of mother only because in the first year we have added in the hands of mother. So it will be continue in the subsequent year also unless and until AO changes it, unless and until AO changes it, right? And uh, second thing is, is very logical. Let's say if there is a single parent, then there is no problem of mother and father. Whosoever is maintaining the child in that in a, who, that particular head, it will be added, right? If, let's say, in case, if the income of a minor child is due to the minor child physical labor, let's say that minor child is working. In that case, that person is, that child is earning income or it is through by applying their knowledge or skill or if the child is handicapped. In that case, in these cases, clubbing will not apply. But in other cases, clubbing will apply. So in uh, cases like, this is written over here, in case the child is working manually or doing some physical labor, or uh, he, he has earned some income by applying his skill, knowledge, or competence, or if the child is suffering from disability, in that case, clubbing provisions will not apply. Otherwise, then all the other income, clubbing provisions will apply. And one more important thing, and you understand, whenever the income of a child is added in the hands of any of the parent, then a uh, exemption of 1500 rupees per child, it is 1500 per month, it is per annum or it's a flat deduction. It's a flat deduction, 1500, right? It's not per month. It's a flat deduction. Let's say 10,000 rupees is the income of a minor child, that, that should be clear. So we will simply deduct 1500 per child, per child. If there are three children, for every child, we can deduct 1500 rupees. But please do remember that this is only in the case of optional scheme. This 1500 exemption is only in the case of if the SSC is following optional scheme. If the SSC is following default tax regime, that is new tax regime, please do not deduct 1500. Please do not deduct 1500. Got it? So only in the case of optional regime, 1500 per child exemption can be claimed. Right? So this is related to a uh, minor child and last is related to, uh, related to HUF. 
let's say if there is any individual there is any individual and that person has his personal property he has his personal proper property and whenever they transfer his, their personal asset to huf without consideration i'm again repeating if any person transfers their personal asset to their huf without consideration then whatever the income on that asset which shall be clubbed in the hands of that individual let's say mr a is a person is an individual person he has his own personal asset and this person is transferring his personal asset to the huf without adequate consideration whatever income is coming on that particular asset shall be added back in the hands of mr a so if if any asset is transferred without consideration to huf please club the entire income but scenario changes after partition if in case in case the huf is partitioned it got partitioned then in that case only his share only his share plus his or her spouse share shall be added only his share and spouse share shall be added not the entire income so i can say before partition entire income will be added but after partition only their share plus spouse share will only be added not the entire income so after partition only proportionate amount related to his and spouse share shall be clubbed and not the entire income but before partition entire income shall be clubbed right this was section 64 section 65 section 65 is a very easy section it says that see whenever the income will be clubbed it will be clubbed in the hands of transferer so ao assessing officer will take tax from transferer but in case this transferer is absconding let's say we are not able to uh, locate this particular person he is uh, unreachable he is unreachable and he is not paying his taxes so we can can we take the tax can we take the tax from the transferee also the answer is yes so section 65 is giving the power to assessing officer it is giving power to assessing officer that assessing officer although you have to take the tax from the transferer because this income will be clubbed in the hands of transferer but in case you are not able to collect the tax from transferer you have the right you have the power to take collect the tax from the transferee also so this is section 65 although very easy and not that important also for examination please remember section 64 is very important right so ao has the power to collect the tax from the transferee also in case the tax cannot be recovered from transferer okay so this was the end of section 65 and now there is another practical concept which is known as cross transfer which is known as cross transfer so we understand that if there is mr a mr a no know, knows that if any asset is transferred to mrs a that is as a spouse then income will be clubbed there is another person mr b he knows that if i have transfer any asset to my wife the income will be clubbed so what they do is they they, they get into such arrangement that they asset mr a transfer certain asset to mrs b and mr b transfer certain assets to his wife right uh, to mr a's wife so they have transferred to uh, just to avoid these provisions that to avoid these provisions they come came out with a different methodology now they have not they are not transferring asset to their respective wives but they are uh, transferring assets to each other's wife right so in that case also whatever the income which this person will get it will be clubbed in the hands of their husband or wife as the case may be or the income which will arise from here it will be clubbed in the hands of mr b correct so this is a kind of cross transfer so if let's say rupees 10 lakh debentures is transferred from here and rupees 10 lakh debentures is transferred from here whatever the interest which mrs a will receive it will be clubbed in the hands of mr a whatever the income which mr mrs b will receive on such debentures it will be clubbed in the hands of mr b you have to see the amount of assets which are getting transferred should be same the income can be different the income can be different the debenture interest can be different but the amount of assets which are getting transferred should be same so here 10 lakh debentures are getting transferred here 10 lakh debentures are getting transferred let's say on these debentures she is earning income of 1 lakh and let's say on these debentures she is earning income of 90000 the income is different no problem but the assets was of the same value So in this case, clubbing will apply. So one lakh will be added in the hands of Mr. A, ninety thousand will be added in the hands of Mr. B. But let's say, if I tell you, Mr. A has transferred a set of ten lakh, right? But Mr. B has transferred a set of nine lakh. 
then whether clubbing will apply yes only related to 9 lakh because what we will see from here 9 lakh is transferred from here 10 lakh is transferred so in this case whatever is the lower amount take that so here from here 9 lakh is 9 lakh worth of debentures are transferred what you can do is you can make it two parts total it was mr a has transferred 10 lakh of debentures make it two parts 9 lakh and 1 lakh correct so whatever the income which is related to 9 lakh which is related to 9 lakh that proportion will be clubbed got it i i believe that you are able to recall this so only that proportion will be clubbed let's say mrs b is getting total income let's say mrs b is getting total income of 1 lakh on 10 lakh debentures so tell me on 10 lakh deb worth of debentures the income is 1 lakh then apply unitary method simple proportionate so 9 lakh how much would be the income so we understand it will be 9 upon 10 lakh so it will be 90000 so in this case 90000 belongs will only be clubbed so if the value of asset is same the uh, entire income will be clubbed but if the value of the asset is different then please pick the smaller value right and whatever is the income related to that proportionate value only club that that income correct so this was related to cross transfer and this here comes the end of this particular chapter now we will meet in another uh, lecture that will be regarding set off and carry forward of losses till then thank you so much bye and take care